Today we are going to talk about dependency injection and we are going to see how we can use strategy design pattern to implement dependency injection. Most of the application in today's world are built in layers, user interface layer, business logic layer and data access layer. User interface layer has ex uh, reference directly to business logic layer and business logic layer has reference to data access layer. When it comes to testing, we should be able to test each layer all by itself. We can definitely test the data access layer all by itself. But when we try to test the business logic layer all by itself, we will not be able to do so because there is a tight coupling between the business logic layer and the data access layer. We can use dependency injection to remove the tight coupling that exists between the business logic layer and the data access layer. The user interface layer will be responsible for creating an instance of data access layer and passing the instance of the data access layer to the business logic layer through its constructor as a dependency injection. Once we have done this, then we should be able to test each layer independently. We were previously able to test the data access layer independently and we should still be able to do it now. But with new approach, we will be able to test the business logic layer without having a data access layer. We can inject the test data into the business logic layer through the user interface layer and test all our test cases. Let's look at a simple example to see how dependency injection can be implemented using strategy design pattern. In this example, tax calculator represents a class in the business logic component, whereas salary represents a class in the data access layer. Tax calculator has a constructor which takes an instance of a data access layer as its input parameter. When an instance of a class tax calculator is created, a concrete class for its salary is passed to it as a variable. The constructor uses this information to initialize the internal variable. The default constructor has been marked private so that an instance of a tax calculator could not be created without passing the dependency. When a client calls a method on business logic component, then business logic component uses the data access component that was passed to it through the constructor to retrieve the information for the given employee ID. Business logic component has no knowledge of what type of concrete implementation was passed to it through the constructor. It blindly calls a method on an object that was passed to it through the constructor. In our example, we have passed fake salary as a concrete implementation of I salary. Fake salary does not go to the database, but it actually creates a list from hard coded test cases. If we would have passed salary as a concrete implementation, then it would have gone to the database to retrieve the employee's salary. This provides us the flexibility of using different concrete implementation for the same interface. In production, we would have passed salary as a concrete implementation. But when we are testing our application, we would pass fake salary as a concrete implementation of I salary. And the fake salary will generate a fake data which covers all the test cases to test tax calculator effectively. In order to understand this concept better, let's take an example. We will be calculating monthly tax that an employee will pay at the end of each month. According to the business rule, the tax will be calculated based on the annual salary. If the annual salary is in between $1 to $15,000, then the tax rate will be 15% and so on. As you could see, for test case 1, we will have to cover boundary condition. That is $1 and $15,000 and we have to cover in between value. So there will be three test cases for a range from $1 to $15,000. The last tax bracket will have two test cases. Altogether, we will have 14 test cases. Let's look at the code to see how this is implemented. We have created an interface called iSalary. In this interface, there is only one method called getEmployeeSalary. This method takes employee ID as an input parameter. In production environment, this method will go to the database, use the employee ID to retrieve employee salary so that it can calculate the tax due by an employee. There are two concrete implementation of I salary interface. One concrete implementation we named it salary. 
which implements the interface iSalary. This concrete implementation simulates retrieving the value from the database. We have created another concrete implementation called fake salary, which also implements iSalary. We have defined a dictionary underscore salary and loaded the dictionary with all 14 test cases, which covers all boundary condition and in between values in its constructor. The index to the dictionary is the employee ID. When get employee salary is called, it tries to retrieve the value corresponding to the ID that is the employee ID from the dictionary. If we call this method 14 times with ID 1 to 14, then it will cover all the test cases that we want to cover for fake salary. In the main program, I have created two methods. One method is to test the behavior of business logic component in production environment and the other method to test the behavior of the business logic component in test environment. Calculate salary on production is a method that simulates how the code will run in the production environment. In this method, I'm using Unity for dependency injection. First, I create an instance of a Unity container. Then I register a type. I registered the type I salary to a salary because we are going to simulate what's going to happen when this code runs in production. Then to the Unity container, I ask it to resolve tax calculator. When Unity tries to resolve a tax calculator, it checks and sees that there is no default constructor and there is only one constructor that takes a dependency. Then it goes to the registration and finds I salary interface is mapped to a salary concrete class. It creates an instance of a salary concrete class and pass and pass it to a constructor for tax calculator and then returns a tax cal instance of a tax calculator to which it has already passed the dependency. On a tax calculator, I call calculate employee and passed five as an ID. When I run this method, I expect it to go to the database and retrieve the value. Let's run this and see what happens. Retrieving salary from database for employee ID 1. As you could see, since I mapped I salary to a concrete class salary, so this indicated that it went to a database to retrieve the value. Next, we will test how our business logic component will behave in a test environment. Let's comment out the first method and uncomment the second method which will test which will test the business logic component in test environment. First I create an instance of a unity container. This time I will map I salary interface to a fake salary concrete class. Then I will ask Unity to resolve text calculator. Once again Unity will see the text calculator does not have any default constructor and it has only one constructor which takes I salary as a dependency. It goes into the registration type and find out what I salary is what type of concrete class I salary is mapped to. It sees that fake salary is the type that it is mapped to. It passes an instance of fake salary to the text calculator and creates an instance of a text calculator. I have created a method called get expected results. In get expected results for each employee ID there is a result that I expect based on the value that I will be passing and if the result maps to my expected result that means the test has passed. If the return result does not match to my expected result then the test fails. I recall this I call the method get expected results and populate the get expected result dictionary. I will use this dictionary to match the value re returned by the text, text calculator. I loop through 1 to 14 to make sure that I cover all the test cases. Then I call calculate employee text which returns the text that is expected for this particular ID. The text returned by this method is compared against the dictionary. If the two matches that means the test is passed. If they don't match, that means the test is failed. The result is displayed over here. Let's run this method. As you could see, all the test has passed. And this time, the fake salary has not got to the database, but it has used in-memory dictionary with all the test cases 
to test the business logic component. Summary. Strategy design pattern can be used to implement dependency injection. Dependency injection helps in designing loosely coupled system. By using dependency injection, we can remove tight coupling between business logic component and data access component. Unity can be used to inject dependency. Please see my other presentation regarding when and where dependency should be injected in MVC, web forms, Windows forms, WCF, console application, Windows Presentation Foundation, and Silverlight applications. Thank you so much for attending this course.